So uh, we'd like to make this an interactive session as much as possible. Please take it away, Andrew. Thanks, Bill. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Hitchcock. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today. We're excited to share with you an important set of features in Microsoft Teams designed to empower shift workers. We call these employees first-line workers. There are two and a half billion first-line workers worldwide. Traditional first-line wor workers include retail associates, customer service, and hospitality. It also includes specialists and first responders who work in shifts such as doctors, nurses, police, and firefighters. Together, these employees make the first impression for your customers. They are the first to experience your products, either in the manufacturing process, in hospitality, or on the retail floor. And they are first to represent your organization and your brand. These are the first moments that matter to the success of your organization. But unfortunately, today, too many first-line workers are encumbered with poor tools to communicate. Uh, sorry, poor tools to communicate. Many are resorting to shadow IT tools such as WhatsApp, or are still relying on paper resources such as uh, paper schedules, probably produced in Excel, posted on the wall of a break room. To keep the schedule handy, they're often taking pictures of these paper schedules and storing them on their phones. We can do better than this. You have the opportunity to empower the first line workers in your organization with Microsoft Teams to make them more connected and more productive and to improve their job satisfaction. Over 16,000 organizations are already providing teams to their first-line workers with fantastic results like better sales and lower attrition. In fact, millions of first-line workers are already licensed for Microsoft Teams, but not yet using it. So today, many of you can start a pilot at no additional cost. The call to action from this webinar is to start a pilot of Teams with, your, with a set of your first-line workers. On this slide are the four pillars of Microsoft Teams from the perspective of a first-line worker, communications, access to documents, apps, and scheduling. Teams is the fastest business, fastest growing business app in Microsoft history. The foundation of Teams is communication. Teams brings together all the communication tools first line workers need for their job. Teams is more than just another app in Office 365. Teams can create a positive cultural shift when first line workers are connected with each other and with your organization. This is really important. Now your first line workers are using the same communications tools that the rest of your organization is using, greatly expanding possibilities for communications and collaboration, and making the first line workers feel more connected to the broader organization. There are a lot of options for communicating in Teams. You can enable first line workers with chatting, audio calls, and even video calls. Recently, the British retailer Marks & Spencer released a video of how customer service and morale has improved since they deployed Microsoft Teams among their shift employees and store managers. The next pillar is document sharing. I have a few customers who've actually led with the access to document scenarios. This seems to be particularly true for manufacturing organizations, where it is important to always have the current versions of the process documentation and operating manuals available for their first-line workers. Additionally, with integrations of the stream video service, the fact that it is all available on the mobile platform makes for a powerful solution. The third pillar is Microsoft Teams as the app platform. Microsoft offers many great solutions, but we can't do it all. And Teams is customizable and extensible so that you can roll out additional line of business applications specific to your industry and wrap them all within the overall uh, Teams framework. Teams has over 300 integrations with third-party applications and a platform on which ISVs or developers in your organization can build and deploy custom line of business applications. Teams offers a private app store that, you, that can be walled off so that only the set of applications you've approved and selected for your employees are available. You can provide all the tools first line workers need in one easy to use hub for teamwork. Finally, let's talk about scheduling. The vast majority of first line workers work in shifts. For many of us, our first job was working in shifts. Recall how work life revolved around understanding when you needed to work, where you were working, and who else was working at the same time. These became important pivots of the job. Whether someone is working in hospitality, retail, or on the factory floor, 
They all share this experience of their work life revolving around a shift. So schedule management is an important part of Teams for first line workers. With the new shifts app in Teams, your first line workers will no longer need to rely on a paper calendar hanging on the wall of a break room. They can use Teams on any device to confirm their schedule and perhaps trade or pick up other shifts. We've really taken Teams to a whole new level to address the needs of the first line workers. So now we're gonna get into some demo. Let me bring up oh, we'll get to the mobile client in a minute. <clears throat> so let's start with the way Teams is used today by companies who are concerned about their first line workers using shadow IT tools. In many cases, the entire first line workforce relies on consumer apps for communicating with each other about their job. The problem is that when employees leave or worse are fired, there's no easy way to remove them from all of the informal groups they've become members of. They continue to get a lot of sensitive information even if they now work for a competitor or are potentially disgruntled former employees. The central management design of Teams protects your organization from this problem because an administrator can easily remove a separated employee from Active Directory, thereby disabling access to Teams along with everything else in Office 365. At the moment, we're looking at the Teams web client. And so we can see here we have an onboarding channel. Um, today offers many ways to improve or Teams offers many ways to improve coordinating among first line workers from basics of group chat. Um, these files and tabs are going to be available on the mobile device, but we'll get to the mobile device shortly. So you can see here we have a chat tab as well as um, a variety of tabs across the top. Um, such as there's the employee handbook. It's easily accessible right here. I'll load in just a second using Word integrated in. Um, and then also over here, we have uh, a recording from a video through the stream recording service, which we could play. But the most popular use for Teams by far is around chatting. So we can hop over to chat. We can see we have a housewares conversation going. <clears throat> At the moment, I'm signed in as Ben. I can do a quick chat. Using at mention, I can pop one of the guys that I know happens to be in housewares. Uh, that popped up on my mobile client, which we'll see later. And I can do a quick reply. So we've got a little typing. So we've got the, the basics of the chat scenario, and we're going to dive into this in a little bit more detail when we get into the mobile side of things. So moving on, so the, the real um, place where things start getting interesting is when we move into shifts. And actually, to save a little bit of loading time, I have shifts right here open in another tab. The most important <clears throat> new feature is the shifts app, and it can be added from the uh, app bar right there. So let's imagine a retail scenario and we're looking at the view of a manager would have uh, of a shift for a week in a retail store. The manager will typically build the shift in a week view, but can change to the day view or to a month view. So here we have the day view loading up. So you can see when the various employees are starting and stopping. And we can switch over to a month view and see the month at a glance. So this is going into May, but we can pop this back to April and see how the schedule was arranged. And move back to the week view. Um, <clears throat> it's important to note, we've got the dates across the top. Um, also, in addition to each day, there's a day note, which is including daily sales goal, traffic goals, 
um, and specific tasks that the manager has assigned for each particular day. It's also worth noting that across the top, we have the total number of hours for across all the employees that are assigned on a given day. Um, as well as if we scroll down, you can see we have the employees organized based on roles. So we have managers, cashiers, and if we scroll down a little bit further, we have sales associates, customer service, whatever makes sense for the particular organization. We have the employees down here. We actually can see the total number of hours that each of them has for the week as well, as well as a roll up for each of these various categories of users. So trying to bring a lot of things together here. Also, up here in the top left-hand corner, we have the total number of hours that were assigned for this particular store for the week. Uh, one of the other things that happens very often is <clears throat> um, since schedules are often produced actually in Excel, it's not uncommon for there to be color coding uh, incorporated within the, uh, within the schedule. So for example, um, in this particular case, Alex has a training day on Monday training days are going to be tagged as purple, and these different colors can mean various things. Uh, let's see, what else is important to point out here? We can um, add shift notes. So that's where this training day came up for Alex. So we can double click in here. This is the manager's view. So we can say, actually, this is supposed to be gray instead of dark, or dark purple. We can add other notes here. Um, prep for the details on what the particular training is going to be, and then that's going to show up there. As you can see, there's an asterisk here because I made a change to this particular assignment, um, and the asterisk also shows up here with share with teams. So this is effectively in draft mode. So in order for me to uh, publish this out to Alex, then I would have to hit this share with team button, and this will give me options as far as who I'm actually going to be notifying, whether that's going to go to everyone or only the people for the change that was affected. So I can cancel that. Um, other important things to point out. Uh, so um, a lot of times, again, since this is the manager's view, one of the things that could be very handy is being able to replicate a particular shift forward. So as you can see, if I go to the month view, and I go forward to May, we see that the schedule is not published starting on the week of May 5th. So we could come in here and we could copy a range from April 21st to the 27th, and we can copy that to the week of May 5th. And often when you're copying shifts, you want to uncheck time off because you actually don't want that to carry forward. So we could click this copy button, duplicate that entire shift forward. So I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so that is the ability to copy um, shifts going forward. The other important thing probably to point out, um, sorry, uh, it goes without saying uh, that all the rich capabilities of Teams are available on the web, Windows, and Mac desktop, as well as Android, iPhone, and iPad. Uh, Office 365 admins ha can control what features are available for your first line workers. For managers creating <clears throat> uh, the content, it is useful to have a desktop view, but your first line workers will most likely spend all of their or spend most of their time in mobile. So now I can bring up. So here we have. Uh, Ben is on an iPhone, and this is over here on the left, which is mobile device number one. And then on the right, we have uh, Alex, who is in housewares, and he is using an Android device. Ease of use is absolutely critical. So we design teams to be so intuitive that no major training program is required to introduce to your first line workers. Um, one of the things that we've done is we've combined channels and chat into a single 
screen. So if you actually come in, we can see under settings and chat, we have the ability to show channels and chat in the same list or separate. And so we can see here I have three channels that are pinned, um, and then all of the remaining chats are down here below. Uh, the, the, in, the expectation is that uh, a first-line worker may have a large number of chats going on, but they're probably going to be very focused to a specific set of teams and channels. And if we come in here, we can actually see all of the teams that this account is a member of, and we have the ability of specifying specifically which channels are going to be showing up on a regular basis. So we have the ability to really focus the experience. So we're going to go into the onboarding channel. And we can see we have conversations going on here. And we're looking for, in this particular case, the employee handbook. And we remember that there was a conversation about this recently. So here we see Patty posted a note um, saying that there's a new employee handbook out that's out. So we can click on this. And that will go ahead and pop up the employee handbook. So that's great, super handy. Um, and we can go back to our chat conversation. And for onboarding, and we can say, hey, where was Patty? There we are. We can use a praise function to get a little bit of a call out to Patty. We can say Patty. Great job with the new handbook. And we could publish that out. So that would be, um, that would pop up, and Patty would get that notification that she received this call out for doing such a great job. The other thing that is useful that we can see here is, so Kronos is a, a third party that does workforce management. So we actually have a bot that's integrated in with, um, with Teams. So you can leverage this Kronos bot to do things like check your schedule, submit time off requests, um, et cetera. Other things that we can do within the chat sphere is we can actually have conversations. So here we can see Alex sent me um, a picture, and I can react to that using sort of the, um, the reactions that we're used to through a lot of social media networks. So we can say, yep, this picture is great. I can also very easily take pictures myself. Um, so we're going to, oops, I'm not going to take a video. We're going to take a photo. We're going to highlight a strange thing that's on the floor of my office. We can uh, annotate the picture. We can add a little bit of text. We can say, what is this thing? And we can move it around, and we can post that directly to um, directly to Alex. Uh, Alex, on this device, can see the new chat from Ben. What is this thing? Alex can respond. I have. No idea. Um, and then as that's going on, we can see we have the little chatting icons to indicate that there's a response coming. It's all very important. Um, and we can even have Ben say, OK. Got it. 
So while this all seems very sort of consumer friendly, um, you know, there's there's some important additional things to, to call out here. So for example, if you look right here down in this corner, you can see this little uh, eye icon. That actually indicates that the other party has seen the message or the message has been displayed on their device. So we can see that, um, that the message has come across. These are actually fully auditable events. So if there are any questions, um, from an HR perspective as far or a legal misunderstanding as far as what happened through the communications. This is all auditable, trackable, traceable, um, and it really sort of goes to demonstrate what a, that this is a real enterprise grade solution for your first line workers. So it's a great example of combining the consumer friendly capabilities that first line workers are coming to expect from a chat application along with the enterprise capabilities of Office 365. Um, the uh, one other thing that's actually kind of good to show is down here we have a record feature. So we actually could um, make a recording where we would hold this down and it was actually recording what I'm saying right now. We could play that and we could send that off. And as you see, that's gonna show up over on uh, Ben's device and he could hit play. You're not gonna be able to hear this on the uh, web stream, but that actually is just a, a quick way of, sometimes it's gonna be more efficient to just record something. You don't wanna necessarily type something out. Um, so the other thing to, or where we're going to move on to next is we're going to dive back and actually I'm going to switch over to Ben for this part of the demo. And as you see down here, we have the shifts application. So we can drop in and we can see Ben's shift on an Android device. Uh, one thing to keep note, well, we all actually will just, there's a, a little bit, I'm in the central time zone, but this shift is in the, uh, was created in the west coast time zone, so there's this yellow banner across the top. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. So as you can see from the shifts app, we've got requests, we can look at open shifts, and there's also a new time clock feature, which we've just introduced. Um, but what's probably a little bit more important to start off with is we can see um, what Ben's schedule looks like, or this is actually Alex, what Alex's schedule looks like um, for the rest of this week. So we can see that he's working um, through the rest of the week. Uh, it's got the weekend off and comes back Monday and Tuesday of next week. Um, so one of the things is let's just say that Alex needs to take off tomorrow. So as we can see, he's working on the 24th. He can highlight his shift and he can say, I would like to swap. And we're gonna go ahead and pick another cashier. We'll pick Patty and, oops, but we wanna pick Patty's shift for, oh, Patty's not working on Wednesday. So we're gonna try and swap for uh, a Thursday shift. So we're gonna pick um, Jonah. And we're gonna say, I have to wash my car. Which is kind of a lame excuse for wanting to do a shift swap. Um, and so Alex, or Alex can go ahead and send that off. Um, you see down here that this is gonna be pending a response from uh, Joanna. Joanna can accept or decline, and depending on if she accepts or declines, then that's gonna to go to the manager for final approval, and then he can accept or decline as well. Um, and this, Alex is sitting here thinking, maybe washing my car isn't such a good excuse for uh, wanting to swap shifts, so I can go ahead and just cancel this request right here. And so now we don't have to worry about that. Um, other things. Uh, so we can swap shifts. Uh, we can also look at our what open shifts are available. So open shifts are an interesting um, concept. It's a sort of a more recent popular trend and it makes it easy for employees to schedule themselves 
uh, so that they can pick up shifts that are available with no particular coworker who's already been assigned. So it's kind of like the, the Uber model where employees can self-select which shifts that they'd like to work. So we can come in here to open shifts and we can see which open shifts are available. There are open shifts on Saturday and Sunday. You can see there's also, it lists out the conflicting, um, or that lifts out a conflict if there's an open shift, but I am already scheduled to work at that point. So I could tap on one of these and try to grab one of these open shifts, and that would also go through for the manager's approval um, before it's actually assigned. Um, and then the time clock is a new feature that we've recently added, um, and we can combine this with geofencing so that you can use the Teams app as well for clocking in and clocking out. So we can do this. We've checked in. We can now start our, our shift. Uh, we have the ability to go on break, which is basically going to pause for some amount of time. Then we can go off break. We're back on our shift. And then we can actually do that, and we're off the shift. And then when we're done, it actually is going to pop up a full timesheet to show how long you were on, et cetera. And then we can confirm that, and that goes off. And then the manager can report on that capability. So that is the uh, the time clock application. That's actually quite new. That just showed up in the last couple of months. Um, next thing that we're going to go look at is the activity features in mobile. So. Here we can see all the different notifications that have showed up for Alex. So we can see new work schedules that have been published. Um, there are other notifications. Uh, apparently Megan wanted to swap a shift with me. So this is kind of, you can think of the activity feed as your inbox for Teams. So it provides that one-stop shop where you can see all of the things that's um, are specifically relevant to you. There's a lot of different information that shows up in here, um, and you've got options for filtering out exactly what it is that you want to look for. Um, so that is the uh, activity feed. And additionally, so one of the other things, so we can see across the bottom, we have activity, we have chat, we have calls, we have shifts. Um, and then the uh, we can also scroll up, and here are additional applications that are available that the administrator has published for me to use within, uh, within Teams. So there's a camera app that we've built. Um, there's the ability to do meetings. There's files, et cetera. Um, there's an organization tab. So all of these capabilities are uh, specifically um, managed and controlled by the administrator. So from the user's administrator, from the user's perspective, you see the applications that the administrator wants you to see. Um, and you can see between um, Ben's uh, applications are configured slightly differently from, uh, from Alex's, and then we can sort of pop this up, and we can also see. The other thing is that the users have the ability to manage which applications show up, potentially. So we could bring calls back forward. We could take shifts and drop those back down so that it shows up sort of under the fold. So then you pick it up, and then here's your shifts application. So uh, in summary, um, that's really what I had to go over today. And I can flip back to presentation. Um, so this is actually, this is a screenshot of the application setup policy. So this is from the administrator's view. This allows you to see what applications are going to be pre-installed for a particular uh, setup policy. So, oops. So here we can see chat meetings, et cetera, and then other capabilities are turned off. Um, and basically how those are assigned to the individual users. So um, that's what I had to demonstrate for today. Uh, the next step really is to get your team's pilots for your first line workers started. Um, 
any of you who attended today, feel free to email me. Uh, my alias is up there, W-A-H-I-T-C-H-C at Microsoft.com if you're interested. Um, and I'm happy to, uh, happy to work with you to get your first line worker uh, pilot started. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and if uh, any other questions, please enter them now. And uh, I am going to show the uh, Marks and Spencer video while we're just seeing if there's any additional questions that come in. So let me start that video now. I mean, I can probably try to read through the, I, I don't know what 